So before we get started in the fashion of all true art YouTube videos, we are going to make a cup of tea. Here is my cute teacup slash mug. And today we'll be making David's tea in Forever Nuts. This is the best caffeine free tea ever. It tastes like Christmas. I'm boiling the kettle and then I realized I have no more tea filters left. And since I've recently moved, I cannot find my little reusable ones. So we're gonna just loose leaf it and use a pasta strainer hopefully to get all the uh, <laughs> tea leaves out after. I like it literally, I'm not promoted to say this. I don't think I have enough subscribers for that, but like, it smells so good. If you're allergic to nuts, um, I guess this is it for you. It's like you have nut free options there, but this one smells so good. It smells like spices and it smells like an apple pie. So in it goes. I'm just gonna do a few scoops here and then pour the water on top and let it steep. I'd like to mention this is not how you should usually make tea, like you should have a strainer, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Hey guys, so my tea is all done and ready and I've placed it far away from my water cup to make sure that I don't accidentally dip my paintbrush in tea while I'm painting. Um, let me know in the comments if anyone has did that before, I know I definitely have a few times. Um, have you really been art school at all if you haven't accidentally drank your paint water at least once? <laughs> so I've started off here with just doing a wash of blue across the background. And this painting today is a little bit different uh, because I am attempting to redo a painting that I have done um, many years ago. So I did an original sketch during university. Uh, it was awful of a laughing woman and today I am redrawing it. The original sketch was done in markers and I will be including a photo of that at the end of this video so you can just uh, see the improvement I did. So again, it was three years ago that I did that original sketch and this is now three years later. So this is three years of daily drawing and practice to show you guys how much and how quickly you can improve with daily practice and I still have a long way to go as an artist as well. So. There's never a point where you're done evolving, so making sure to always sketch and always critique and take criticism is so important. And um, I think three years ago, I was kind of stuck in the habit of always drawing people with just kind of a blank facial expression or just from a straight on perspective. And I've really um, pushed myself in the past few years to draw different emotions, to draw different angles for the face, different profiles. So that's kind of been my area where I wanted to improve and trying to draw a lot more hands and things that really challenge me. But I think a lot of um, mistakes that new artists make is they get comfortable drawing just one thing or they just say that they like to draw one thing, they don't want to learn to do other things and that is so dangerous for a new artist. You don't want to stifle yourself like that. You don't want to limit yourself like that. A good artist is a versatile artist so you never want to get kind of stuck into your comfort zone you want to push I, I remember I fought with my art teacher about this back in the day I didn't want to learn how to draw faces I used to hate drawing faces um, so my childhood dream growing up was to be a fashion designer and I only wanted to draw the clothes I didn't want to draw faces I didn't want to draw hands fast forward 15 years later and here I am um, I'm gonna say I mainly do portraiture they're one of my favorite things to draw they're so expressive and they make me happy <laughs> but it was something I really resisted in the beginning so while you're learning art, open mind is absolutely key, and I think I've said that a million times. And I guess the next thing I want to talk about is the difference between having um, an art style and not being versatile. So I, I get into this argument with a lot of people, with a lot of my students, where they want to argue that this is just my art style, this is what I do. But if you're not developed enough as an artist, if you haven't had enough training, enough practice, you haven't really developed a style yet. Like we can start to see some of the things you like to draw, some of the quirks your art has, but don't get being comfortable with one thing and just maybe just doing one thing really well, confused with having a developed and full art style. It takes years to develop your style as an artist and as you get older, it changes, it evolves. Um, I think as a child artist into an adult, it becomes more sophisticated. So there's a big change that happens there. Um, 
and I thought it's so hard because art is so personal so I feel like it's really easy to kind of get all crusty and argue with your art teacher and you don't want to change and there's something to be said to sticking your guns sticking to your vision but there's nothing to be lost from creating with an open mind from taking creative feedback objectively some people are full of it and just want to knock your talent down but you want to be listening to other skilled artists who are coming from a place of improvement and I think it's sometimes you can kind of tell when someone's just trying to be nasty and when someone's giving you positive feedback so that's something that a lot of uh, new artists kind of struggle with it's an argument and you'll kind of learn it's like a growing pain you'll learn as you get uh, older and more advanced um, into the art community um, the difference between developing your style and between just being too comfortable drawing one thing. I feel like you see a lot of artists that almost stop growing because they're just not experimenting. And that's so sad because they're really talented and good at what they do, but when you're not learning, you're dying. So to learn and to be a student forever is the best thing you can do for yourself. I feel like a lot of artists fall into the trap of what I would like to call harmful language. So I can't, um, I'm not good at it, this isn't, this isn't me, um, I'm not capable, you're better than me, like these kind of thoughts, these, this language that I see so prevalent with young artists and in the art community is so damaging, you'd have no idea. Um, so I guess this is an example today that like you can start off somewhere that's not so great and with the right amount of practice you can get somewhere that's amazing. And. Um, it's just all about perseverance and I think I hear people say like oh natural born artist born with talent I don't think people are born with talent or natural um, aptitude I think people are born with different levels of determination and they decide when they, they don't take no for an answer they decide when it's enough they decide if they're gonna be good at something or not and they persevere and they have the natural interest in something and I think that's what makes it. I don't think people are born with just this amazing ability to draw. You learn how to draw. People are born with, with a de determination to do it. So I guess with enough interest and determination, if you can build your confidence up to a point where you're gonna fail and then just keep going back over and over again, that's when you really get someone who is gonna blossom, someone who's determined. I've had students that get in and they literally can't hold a pencil and I get so worried about them and within six months they make this beautiful transformation into a young blossoming artist and it just it depends if you're gonna put the hours in so work in equals results um it, to an extent so you also don't want to be just kind of like doing the same thing over and over again and overwhelming yourself but a good balance is key so i think the rule of thumb would be about an hour of sketching every day you can take a break once a week it's okay um in just a space where you're calm and you're feeling relaxed is gonna be the best for creating art if you're forcing yourself if you're feeling stressed if you're exhausted it's gonna show in your art so i've noticed a difference between my paintings my drawings when i'm really down and when I'm exhausted and I'm not feeling it versus when I'm in a mood to create and I'm in a safe space. It's a ton of difference. It's so noticeable visually. And I like to create happy art. Like I don't like to create things that make me sad and it depends from artist to artist, but I think I have to be in a happy mood to make happy art. If you're in a sad mood, you're gonna make sad art. So the art process is so dependent on emotion and mood. So making sure that you're taking care of your mental space as well is so important. And once you do that, the art process becomes very healing. So we've reached the end of this video. Um, if you liked it, please hit the subscribe button. New content is out every week. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments about your art stories, about your redraws, any questions you'd have for me. And as promised, I'm going to show you the photo of the old painting. Oh gosh, <laughs> it's a little bit frightening. And you can see how much I've improved since then. Thank you for watching.